Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer request we've got from Ethan M. Hey Cap, can I suggest a helicopter formation tutorial? Sorry I haven't been able to tune into the streams, busy with exams, no problem Ethan, and yes we will, we will do the best we can. Now, the first thing to state is none of us in this virtual room at the moment are professional helicopter pilots. We do actually have a professional helicopter pilot with us, a real life pilot. Unfortunately he hasn't joined the chat so we're going to do the best we can. We're going to split today's tutorial or general guide into two. One, what makes it different to flying for instance jets in formation and then two, how do we do the physical geometric layout of the formation. So firstly, if we look at flying jets in formation that is relatively easy to do compared to helicopters and the reason that is we've only got three dimensions to worry about and those three dimensions don't really interact with each other and that makes it easy and relatively simple to do comparatively comparatively it still needs a lot of muscle memory and skill but to explain if i was for instance a second man in a formation here in a jet and that was a jet that i was following there all i need to do to move left and right is go left stick whoops left stick right stick with my yoke or my stick uh, all if i wanted to go up or down all i would need to do is forward or aft stick with my yoke or with my stick and if I wanted to go longitudinally forwards and backwards then I would put my thrust forward and my thrust backwards and because you know it fires a load of gas out the back that gives me a perfect thrust vector of directly in front that gives me three lovely non-interacting controllable axes very easy to do the next hardest to do is a warbird and we'll come back to that and the hardest to do is a helicopter and here's why Again, my scenario is I'm following this guy, we're in the air, I'm uh, the follower. If I need to move left or right to keep my position, then again, cyclic stick, left or right, nice and easy. If I want to move up or down to keep in formation, forwards and backwards on the cyclic, very easy. But here comes the problem. If I want to go longitudinally forwards or backwards because I'm getting too close or I'm dropping away too much, and bear in mind these adjustments you'll be doing all the time, there I go, I'm going to go into his... Uh, hindquarters then I don't have a lovely jet engine what I do have is a collective very simply a collective changes the angle of attack of these rotors that you see spinning around and what that means is the thrust vector the thing that actually happens when I put that collective up or down is essentially directly up so there's nothing I've got to push me forward so if I wanted to go forwards and backwards what I have to do is I have to well, if I want to go forwards for instance I have to push my collective up which is going to make my helicopter go upwards and subsequently work with that push my cyclic stick forward the combination of those balanced correctly will allow me to move forward in the longitudinal axis and you can start seeing the problems that are coming here so I don't have three axes that are completely independent I have to balance multiple axes together to for instance move forwards and backwards and it gets even more complex on that so again, if you spool up a jet engine and a jet and, and push forward, it doesn't really create any twist, any roll, any pitch, any other problems in a jet. In this, if I also change the collective, therefore the angle of these blades, as well as pushing an upwards force, for reasons I don't really understand, it also puts, a, if you like, a twisting force, a torque force on the whole helicopter. It makes me spin right or left, depending if I'm going more or less collective. And that has to be cancelled out with another axis, which is going to be, I know rudder's not the right word, I think it's called power pedal, isn't it guys, something like that. Anti-torque. Anti-torque, but you know, let's just call it rudder for today to keep it easy. I have to put rudder in. So that's another axis I'm bringing into the equation that you just don't need in a jet. In a formation in a jet, you, you know, I don't think I've ever used rudder, you just don't need it. In a helicopter you do. And again, that's an interacting force, because if you've got to increase your collective or decrease your collective, you've got to cancel that out with your anti-torque -anti pedals. So that essentially becomes, four axes that you're going to constantly balance with each other because if you push one up the other one has to change if you push one down the other one has to change to keep your aircraft in formation with another and that's why it's so much more difficult than driving a jet now i did mention as well warbirds warbirds is essentially halfway between the hardness of a helicopter and the easiness of a jet because you've got a thumping great engine and a thumping great spinning mass, a rotor, uh, sorry, propeller on the front, a warbird, if I'm going to put my thrust forward to give me a longitudinal force, the thrust to go forward, that will actually twist my whole airframe over like that, or over like that. And you have to balance that with your rudder and or aileron. So you have 
a limited amount of axes, uh, input axes interaction. So it's, like I said, halfway in between. Next thing I want to talk about is your actual control stick. I'm going to assume that you have a standard control stick that 99% of people out there are using. Like mine, I have a wing wing stick. That's not product placement, I just literally do. If I pushed it forwards, look, and then if I let my hand off it, it goes back to the middle. If I push it right, it goes back to the middle. That's a standard, you know, HOTAS thing that you would buy. It has springs in it which make it spring back to the middle. Now, a real helicopter stick, I've been told, doesn't quite work like that in, in collaboration with the trimmer. We're going to come into the trimmer in a bit. But the real helicopter stick, if I were to trim it in position, for instance there, will actually stay back. It won't spring back in the middle there. We can't simulate that with our sprung sticks in, in DTS because obviously when we trim our stick, it springs back to the middle. Okay, so that's a problem we're working with. And one reason why our sticks aren't realistic like helicopter sticks. Now, a couple of guys that are in our GRAV, our GR uh, Air Cavalry, what they've done is they've actually removed the springs from their wing wings and their verbals and their thrust masters so that it no longer goes to the middle like that because it becomes a much more realistic helicopter stick if you move it there and it stays there. You move it there and it stays there. Okay, so that's just one thing to bear in mind. Now, I don't expect you to go and do that, but that's a thing. And that's, again, telling you one of the difficulties that we have here that necessarily... Uh, a real helicopter pilot might not have. That moves us on to trimmer. A trimmer is not the same thing as a tr trim in an aircraft. It's similar in its idea, but it's not the same in the way it functions. For instance, the trimmer for this UH-1H is pilot trimmer. What a trimmer does in a real helicopter and kind of in DCS is if I pull my stick back like that and I press the trimmer button, it stays in that position. And in fact, I might be able to do it here. Let me try doing it here. Trim. Yeah, it does. It literally does, guys. And then if I retrim, uh, let's try and push it forward again. Trim there. Done. When you see it wobbling, that's me taking the hand off my physical stick. So I'm going to trim there. I'm going to take my hand off my physical stick. My wing wing has gone back to the middle, but the helicopter pilot is it's staying there. That's how the trim works in, in, in a real helicopter. As far as I'm aware, all of them. Because a trimmer system in a helicopter works differently. These are crash into each other, you lot. The first important thing to say is we are going to trim our helicopter neutrally as best we can in formation. What that means is lead, this, this blue guy here, is going to take off, it's going to fly along, uh, probably have his autopilot on to keep him super, super, super steady. I'm going to fly manually with my reflexes and my skills, my four axes in tandem as we talked about, and keep as perfectly in formation as we can. When we reach that absolute critical position where my controls are as balanced as they can and my helicopter is flying formation, I will press the trimmer. What that will do virtually is keep my stick, for instance, there in position. That becomes the neutral position for my stick then, even though my wing wing is actually centralized. centralized. This means that I will be flying in formation with my actual stick pretty much neutralized. This is just, I don't really have the ability to explain why, but that's just going to give you the most uh, axes, uh, balanced axes of movement for flying at a certain condition, i.e. the condition is in formation. Okay, so to repeat, the first and the most important thing we're going to do is get roughly in position with our manual controls, then hit the trimmer, which is going to trim our cyclic thus. Next after that, it's a case of keeping formation. And after that, it's just up to your skill. Because you're already trimmed, your movements won't need to be necessarily very much. They should be small movements on the collective and balancing movements on the pitch, independent movements on the cyclic uh, left and right, and uh, balancing interactions with the anti torque pedals. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a bit. The second half of this video is looking at basic geometric positioning. Okay, it's going to be different for each helicopter because each helicopter. You know they're not designed to fly with each other literally so um, we need to do the best we can in DCS so I'm going to show you with my Huey please don't hit me I'm going to go up to stay still big blue mum oh I'm sure I just realized I'm completely off trim okay we will do the best we can uh, with this I'm going to go and use that mothership the blue one as the best I can with my funny trim there. right there that's my geometric position where I want to keep him so this one, I'm going to use my, uh, just assuming I'm going to be off to his left, uh, we're going to create a chevron, okay? So the lead guy's there, then the next guy's left and back, the next guy's left and back, the next guy's left and back, and then the same thing on the right, right and back, right and back, right and back. So just inverse this, obviously, for the other side. So what I'm going to have in the Huey is the guy off to my right in the main right 
front panel and he just wants to be t interacting with his bow so if his tail here is interacting with that bow there then I've got him just right in terms of up and down vector the lead the guy following sorry the guy in front always wants to be slightly above I've never fully understood the reason for that and in real life that might not be accurate bear in mind but in DCS that's how we're going to have it bear in mind that uh, there are occasions where real pilots will actually fly like this staggered vertically so that they have their blades interacting with each other so lead here I could have my blades in and underneath his blades there's probably we won't do that today because just none of us are going to be here that good enough note that in DCS with our big multiplayer missions we have wake turbulence and rotor turbulence turned off okay this may become this may be different if we had those turbulences turned on the reason we do a GR is because we have mass multiplayer games of 25 people and it starts to kill servers if you have wake turbulence on so just bear that in mind uh, let's go to the next helicopter and let's look at where we're going to position our friend so we're going to go in a an MIA if we can grab one now important thing I should say and you know me I like my excuses is I am a horrendous um, helicopter pilot and that may actually help in this video because it's going to show you <laughs> I mean look look at me trying to fly it's going to show you how the layman tries to do this and I literally am a layman in a helicopter I don't think I've ever survived a GR helicopter mission um, not because of getting shot down but I just have never had I've just never put in the time to build up the muscle memory it's as simple as that sorry red guy but you may be getting nasty surprise uh, yep looks like it it's Francis what a oh, treat crap. I'm gonna stick it down now am I clear do you like I'm dumping it <laughs> not really and then this window here is where I'm gonna keep him for uh, for that again I'll be slightly blow him so he'll be further up in the window right next helicopter's gazelle it's going to be essentially the same in that this right panel is going to be just touching the bow there and slightly above uh, you know horizon line if you like and finally Kamov in a Kamov you sit a lot further back from this kind of screen here compared with other helicopters for reasons I don't know and in a Kamov I'm actually going to place him in this right quarter window here there would just be too far away because of the angle we're actually going to place him about there it's going to allow him to be slightly above us and uh, again you've got a good reference there we can keep him within this uh, framed area here a bit like they did on Apollo 13 you've seen that guys watch it the other day uh, and you're going to keep him there okay guys right so that's lots of talking from me what we want now is to go and see it in practice and again I must stress me especially I'm going to represent you the lay person oh I actually haven't talked about distance in terms of distance you will follow the exact same formula that we do with DCS for jets and as you hear me shouting in all my missions the better you are the more experienced you are the closer you go so first of all imagine the chevron we're about to create the crapper you are the further down the pecking order you go the chevron when you're really really terrible you go right down the bottom of the chevron and that's because you're always depending on the guy in front of you for your stability so the crapper you are the further down you want to be towards the tail okay um, in terms of distance how close you're going to be to your leading man um, I'm going to follow this guy here that guy's going to follow that guy there that guy's going to follow that guy there the distance again will depend on your skill if you're good skill go really close if you're bad skill stay further back and you're going to have to judge that amount yourself okay now a real formation go see the red arrows or the blue angels and whatever works differently you all fly off the front guy here okay so two three four five six tiers all flying off the front guy you don't do that in in amateur dcs that's you know that's that's much too hard for us to do this is i stress amateur level that we're doing here so we're going to go off that guy that guy's going to go off that guy and it's good enough okay guys now we're going to need a leader with autopilot because with the best will in the world this is not going to work very well can we have a brightly colored huey francis would be good go about 70 knots put it in autopilot and then we'll go off you now I'm gonna go right tight on you because I need to show up for valid viewers the rest of you just follow what my orders were out of interest viewers at the top left you can see my cyclic my collective uh, my anti talk and you've actually got my throttle on the bottom left but a throttle generally speaking will just stay on full all the time in a helicopter works very different to uh, uh, an aeroplane in that respect okay is that you with the orange and white yeah that's me okay what I want you to get out is to take 300 whatever Ello said to the oil rig this year valid viewers is gonna be lots of helicopter missions because we've got lots of helicopters coming out this this year and so get used to it buy some helicopters and come join us describing what I'm doing the first thing I'm gonna try and do is just catch up with him I'm not even gonna bother trimming at this point I'm just gonna roughly catch up with him so remember subconsciously when you're gonna put the collective up to go forwards you're also gonna naturally uh, uh, cyclic forwards you've got to get into that idea of, of uh, combining them at the same time 
as part of flying a helicopter. You can do what you want on the right, guys, but I need to be on the left at least. Right, I'm just going to start balancing things. We're trying to now. First thing I'm going to do is try and get settled manually as best I can. Okay, I am trimming. I just trimmed there, for instance. You can see my stick is trimmed off center. Which way, I don't know, but... So what if you could see my hands? I'm constantly up and down on the collective. Not a massive amount, probably 5 to 10%. And my stick forwards and backwards is up, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. So get in that balance between collective and cyclic forward. And it's absolutely not an easy thing. Taking everything I've got just to sort of... Just off your left as well, Cap. So now you've got two sides to watch. I think. What I needed was some more pressure. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about the vertical element for the moment. I just want to get that lat longitudinal and lateral. Lateral is actually quite easy. Long uh, longitudinal is very hard. <sighs> and then when you try and get the third dimension. Are you an autopilot, Lee? Is you an autopilot? Yes, sir. And I can't blame you, can I? Uh, you could. I think I've got it. I've got a trim nice there. And that's going to be our key thing. And that gives me a lovely control here. And my... Movements can get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, you said right that the Valkyrie's uh, choosing here. Not with full concentration needed. I'm aware I'm in the wrong geometric position as well, Valley viewers. There we go. I'm in now the right geometric position, maybe I'm slightly far aft. And that is all of my skill to the point where I can't even talk anymore, which is a first, I think. How are you going to do an F3 that view? No, ain't going to happen. One thing I've realised I've been lax on is my anti-rock torque pedals. I've been so focused on getting this right, I haven't been anti-talking, and that's why I'm side-slipping ever slightly, um, which is not really the proper way to do it, but I've hit my, uh, hit my skill limit, unfortunately. What I'm going to try and do now, and this may end badly, is I'm going to try and get my rotors under his, just to show how even a, a complete noob can do it. gets the formula right let me know when my rotors have gone under of course I'm doing a friggin 200 kilo workout here now you want to keep your arms and relax but mine aren't mine are yourself, I'll, I'll, I'll a get little my bit forward and you'll be intersecting <sighs> I don't think I've got the... I'm right on his... He's right on my bow at the moment, so I don't think I... All right, I'm going to try it. Now, don't, I don't recommend this, valued viewers. This is the silly bit. Oh, this is where uh, we end up in a big fireball. Yep. How's that, boys? How's that? Sweet. Oh. Actually. So don't oh, do I it... I can see your rudders from my side window. Oh, that's close. Don't do it like this, valued viewers. This is very, very dangerous. In fact, it's just showing... <laughs> what can be... That's pulling I can oh, 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 in your action! The front is! You guys keep flying. I'm sweating buckets. Yeah, it, it is hard. It's hard, really hard work. It's like learning to fly jet formation or whatever it is. You see, Valley viewers, how I'm, my camera's looking down. And the reason for that is they're all flying one step down, just like this been taught. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, let's just do some names to see who's in what. Uh, we're going right. Who's in the MIA? Reagan in my uh, in my RS two hundred white one. Kamov. Uh, Penguin. Penguin. MIA. Reese. Uh, we're gonna. They, they kind of get a bit chaotic after that. Left one Huey. Tuxor. Thank you. Nice. Uh, left two Huey. Thank you. Look how they stepped down there, Valley View, as you can see, so they've not got, they haven't got rotor interaction. Again, is that how real helicopters do it? I don't know. That's how we do it in DCS, at least. Okay, guys, what I think we'll try, we've never tried this before, is we'll try a, uh, a break, okay? An umbrella break where we all go, you know, left, go left, right, go right, forward to go up, and, and, and see how that looks. So hold off, don't go until I say. I know a lot of you are premature umbrella daters. <laughs> I was wondering how you was going to put that. Yes. Got to keep it clean, boys. Got to keep it clean for the kids. Three, two, one. Break. 
Doesn't look quite as good as the Jets. I'm not going to lie. Actually, that's not bad. Look at them go. Look at them go. Oh, that was good oh, in the nice end. Oh, nice straight into the ocean. It wasn't in my head, to be fair. And two way mats down. Whoops. And <laughs> even Dragon, I think, is going to go down in his own chopper. Well done, boys. Never. Thanks. Any final comments? <laughs> Any final comments that will help the valued viewers? Not just slagging people off, but will help the valued viewers. Yes, yeah, so that has to be rock, rock solid on his flight. Right, lead rock solid. Dragon. I thought I would just uh, suggest a couple of, uh, you know, exercises to uh, to practice the skills that needed information. I was going to propose for you, valued viewers, to train yourself. You can teach yourself how a helicopter behaves using just a... Uh, just a... Uh, airstrip as it's a straight and long line on the ground um, I don't know if, if it goes well or not today uh, this is just an example of what we're talking about uh, about the interaction of the axis on the helicopter so if you stabilize yourself along the axis of the runway uh, pretty much the exercise is uh, to see what happens when you try to reduce your speed like if you keep your controls steady and just reduce the collective boom you so see you bang mm -hmm. the ground yeah so, so you need to keep your altitude yeah. you, you you need to also put your cyclic back well let's do it uh once again a little more Altitude. It's okay. Very, it's very hard to do it artificially. That's the thing. Another thing you could say is you you could say you're flying in formation with the center line of the runway. Mm, yeah. So I'm flying uh, 140 along the center line of the runway, and I'm trying to reduce my speed. Oh, so we figured out you need to reduce collective and also pull back on the cyclic. Right. But that brings you left oh. left quarter uh -oh. forward up. Well, we get the idea because it gives you a visual reference, a uh, visual reference to practice against. So that if you want to, you know, just like we, we yeah, said, you want to practice my, with this. I think I broke, yeah. I think it's a good idea. Bomb up and down the runway, keep it perfectly aligned with that thing, and move. I mean, what Dragon was trying to do is put big motions in there to show it off, but the reality is it will be small motions. Um, you just wouldn't be able to see it on camera. And, um, and and do that, practice that. Okay, that's a good idea. Anything else? Put in a lot of training with your buddies. That's the best way. There you go. Join grab and get it on with. These guys have clearly lost their concentration because they are yeah, just they glorified five-year-olds at the end of the day. Welcome to GR. <laughs> I hope you found that useful and see you later.